Buccaneers have the greatest quarterback of all time, arguably, yeah. four good receivers and a couple good running backs, and they're scoring 16.3 points per game on the road. What's going on with the offense this year? Yeah, I mean, honestly, like up front, uh, it feels to me or it looks to me like like for there's a, there's a couple of things. And I think on the field between the between the, the lines, I think what most people watching the Buccaneers might notice is it definitely looks like Tom Brady's not supremely comfortable behind that offensive line. And I think to a certain extent, extent you know, that's that's to be expected. Ali Marpet has left guard, retires uh, center. Ryan Jensen gets injured on the first day. Uh, of tra- train or offseason programs and then right guard Shaq Mason is experienced but still new to the group and you know you're having to kind of constantly rotate people then for a while they go with the rookie uh Luke Gedeke there at the at the left guard position and it's just it, it was just kind of been just a mix up a jumble there up front and now Tristan Wirfs is you know also injured and and, and missing time so it's it's just kind of a, of a mess up front and I think a lot of the quick throws that you're seeing from Tom comes from a lack of confidence and even in uh, some of his the play calling from Byron Left, which I think there is kind of a display of a lack of confidence in what that offensive line can truly provide for the running game and for the passing game. And then Todd Bowles, a defensive minded head coach, obviously one of the better defense coordinators uh, in the league during his time. I also think he is kind of the classic defensive minded coach where he wants to control the ball, run the ball, mm. hold the clock, but then also let his defense kind of be the hero of the day. So I think all that combined is the reason you're seeing really what's a very pedestrian offense uh, out of Tampa Bay. Yeah, so it's you can point to the offensive line. Clearly, that offensive line is, is not good. Is there – I'm just wondering from afar, do they miss Bruce Arians? I don't know that you necessarily say they miss Bruce Arians. In fact, actually, we've had this conversation on, on Locked on Bucks, and I've actually – I've kind of wondered if maybe – Bruce Arians in this situation with this offensive line and some of the problems they've had would actually be a worse head coach mm, for like this version the of the field. Buccaneers. Yeah, because yeah. he's going to want to push the, the ball down yeah. the field. And he's basically going to tell his guys, look, it's your job to give Tom time. Go give Tom time. And if they can't do it, I mean, who knows? Like Tom Go Brady down. could be injured in week three and out for the season, you know, type of a deal. And, you know, you hate to speculate those kinds of things. But honestly, just with the way that Bruce approaches the game, it actually could possibly be worse uh, in, in in some aspects. Got it. Um, <clears throat> offense was looking really bad uh, in this last game until the very end. They go you no know, huddle up tempo, and all of a sudden yeah. it's Tom Brady doing his thing. I guess <clears throat> from the 49ers perspective, is there a possibility that the Bucks could come out doing this in the first quarter and say, you know, let's uh, this, this Niners defense is great, but if we yeah. keep them from substituting and maybe keep that defensive line on the field for eight, nine, ten plays, we got yeah. a chance. Is that something that they do? I mean, you would like to think so, right? But this isn't the first time we've seen this Buccaneers team go, you know, uh, with, with a hurried tempo and go no huddle and all that stuff for a stretch of time, have a lot of success. And then everybody around the Buccaneers says, well, look, it works really great. Now let's see this earlier in the game and let's do this more often to come out next week and to be generally disappointed that you don't actually see that happen early in the game and you don't see it happen more often. And it's something that I kind of wonder following uh, the last minute win against the New Orleans Saints because you come, when we came into the locker room after that game, you know, there's a lot of questions. There was a fourth down, fourth and two, if, if memory serves correctly, on the New Orleans 40. They were down two scores, had about seven minutes left in the game. You feel like that's a pretty good spot to maybe go for it uh, on fourth down and, and see if you can't get a first down, continue to move, drive, drive down the field, and, and, and eat into that lead. Todd Bowles decides to punt. Well, then later on, you end up with a fourth and long in your own end of the field, and there was some – it seemed like some discussion, some hesitation maybe to sit, deciding whether or not to go for it or punt. Todd Bowles eventually does punt, which – you know, you hate to go for it on fourth down in that type of situation, but kind of view back to it. If you go for it on that previous fourth down, maybe you don't need this one as much and it's not such a tough decision. So when it got brought up to Todd in the postgame press conference, he kind of says, well, you know, if we do those things and we give up points to the Saints and we lose this game. So see, it turned out really great for us. And it almost kind of feels like he feels now vindicated in his slow, steady approach, being super conservative early and only pushing the tempo when he needs to. So because of that, I expect to see more of the same. Who's the go-to guy in this passing offense? <clears throat> uh, I mean, honestly, I would say Chris Godwin, right? So Mike okay. Evans is is still kind of on pace for his thousand-yard season, which would extend his record that he broke from Randy Moss, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, and that's great. Um, Kate Otten, the tight end, the young tight end, has certainly looked really good in the moments that he's had uh, as well. I and mean, we know Tom loves the running backs, but I feel like Chris Godwin is the guy uh, coming off of his knee injury, coming off of an earlier, you know, hamstring injury early in the season. He's now starting to look like the real Chris Godwin that Bucks fans have come to know uh, and love. And I feel like the better he gets uh, this season, the more in tune he gets this season, the more dangerous he can be. And he's a guy that can do it on all three levels 
uh, to a certain level of of of, uh, of of ability. And we know that everybody's going to pay attention to Mike Evans. And the more that Julio Jones kind of gets involved, Scotty Miller has done some good things. But I really feel like the more this team gets Chris Godwin going, the better they're going to be in the long run. Final question on the offense. How's the run game? Uh, the run game? So the run game, not very great, right? So, so towards the bottom of the league, the running back usage and the contributions from the running backs has been improved. And Leonard Fournette... Uh, you know, came in as the workhorse and he was on career high, you know, pace to, and, and touches, yards, all these things. And then he kind of gets banged up. Rashad White, the rookie out of Arizona State, has gotten a lot of work lately and shown flashes of what he can do and why he deserves a bigger, bigger role. Some people want him to be the true RB1. Some people still think Lenny, the veteran, should be that guy. It's going to be a split. I think the guy that steps onto the field first is basically going to be the guy that just fits the script and what they want to do against the Niners defense uh, coming, coming right out the gate. So it's really not a matter of who's RB1. It's just both those guys are going to get their burn in certain circumstances, and they're both showing their abilities. But I think Rashad White is really the guy that a lot of Niners fans may not necessarily know. I mean, he comes out of the Pac-12, so, you know, West Coast you know, fans may still know who he is. Uh, but he's more of the James White type of running back uh, than Leonard Fournette is. And I think the more he gets comfortable, the more he gets going with Tom, the more he could be impactful as we get down the stretch. So the, the quick and easy answer when you ask – hey, why is the Tampa Bay running game not that great despite having two good running backs? Or, hey, why is the Tampa Bay passing game not that great despite having four weapons and the greatest quarterback of all time, the offensive line? It matters.